We screwed another one up, Ronnie. Donnie has broke our CNC by just running it over and over again. This is a Zenbot. It's actually worked really well for us. So this company that makes these, it's a pretty cool little uh, machine. But Donnie's not happy with it, so he's going to take some stuff off of it. We're kind of of ahead on our production schedule. We use it to make arcade game cabinets. Um, he's going to take it apart, and then we'll show you the problem that we're having. We bought this used, actually, so we didn't get this new from the gentleman that makes them. We bought this off of another guy. I've got to come up with it. He's got to come up with it. There it goes up with it. Now, we're not CNC experts. We're learning as we go. Okay, lift the tube off. Okay, here's what the problem is, okay? Here's the problem. Are you ready? So notice it runs a router. It doesn't run a... Uh... Hey, that's good. Yeah. That's how it's supposed to sound. Yeah. We've got a bearing acting up. So it hasn't went out on us yet, but... It still works, but there's obviously there's something going on. So. There's something else going on. Let's see if it does it this time or not. No, nope, it works. The router ain't turning on neither. So you got to turn the router on and hit the router one time to make it come on. This is a Ryobi... No. Uh, Metabo. Metabo. So that's, that's a Ryobi, ain't it? No, that's... Uh... Hitachi. 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 Metabo router. Um, the last two or three times I turned it on, it wouldn't come on. You had to hit it. But the whole thing is we're we're overusing the, the router. You're not supposed to, like, run it in a, uh, a CNC, really. I mean, I guess you can, but we're using it a lot, you know. Yeah, we're running it hard, too. So it's it's... It had tons of hours on it. So the way we fix, uh, whenever we have problems with that is, we just, got we just keep extras in stock. We got about four of them. Um, so that, like I said, this thing has actually been really reliable and works good. It's, it's well built. Oh, he's showing you another one. It's, a, it's well built for what it is. It's not a, um, like a production quality machine or anything but it's also not priced as a production quality machine it's a hobbyist machine so yeah it's like a hobbyist machine you're supposed to run it about 100 inches per minute or less and donnie how fast were you running it now donnie 180 so donnie's running it at 180 inches per minute cutting uh melamine three quarter inch melamine so you know you're not really supposed to do that but see and we we also did this this is a modification i did so it's not breathing neither. I'm putting a uh, piece of plastic over it so it won't blow air down. If it blows air down, it blows my chips out and I want them to be sucked up. So I put that over it. The only way it can get air is up top now. So we're overheating it the whole time too. Yeah. So that doesn't help, but for our purposes, it's necessary. So we're gonna try to get in there and see how the gentleman that built these Zenbots made the bearings. We can actually email him too if we need parts or something. But I can just tell you, this feels smooth. But once you get over here, I can feel a lip. Did you show him that dent in it? Yeah, there is a dent somewhere too. Yeah, right there, see that? So I don't know if that's doing anything, but you know, it's grinding the whole way across. So I think there's a, uh, I think one of the bearings is probably completely froze up. What do you think, Donnie? Probably. Now keep in mind, these get sawdust in there constantly. Yeah, and we'll, like I say, we're running them hard. We're not playing with them. So. Donnie, Donnie's been pedaled to the metal. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna fix the bearing and then we're going to uh, put a new spoil board on it, I think. And we might take this, I might take this here 
and flip if it. If I can, and twist it. Maybe one quarter turn or something. Yeah, where I get a, a fresh edge of it. So we'll see if that's even possible. But, you know, should be. I don't know. We're probably going to break it. But the guy that makes them, you can email him and order parts for it if you break one. Yep. More than likely, we're going to break it. I feel bad uh, emailing them and ordering parts because I, we bought it used. But the guy's been very accommodating. Because he did sell it to the other guy, you know. Well, he's making money off parts. Yeah, I and mean, we're paying them, you know. Yeah, it's not like you get free parts or nothing. Yeah. So I think what we got to do is take this off here. Donnie's the mechanic. We're going to let him do it. I'll see something. He believes he knows how to do it. But the problem is that other piece is in there, that spring-loaded piece. And, uh, hmm. What might... do you think, Donnie, about you take this back panel off? Yep. And then you just take the back plate off. Well, uh, we can do that too, but I was taking this panel off, the front panel. Mm-hmm. You think take the back panel off? I don't know. All right, we're going to figure out what we want to do, and then we'll come back. All right, so we took the plate off behind the uh, whatever, mm. and we also took the, the, the helper spring off. Mm. And Donnie has it where we can get in there. Look at all that metal shaving down there. Can you see that? Uh huh. Go get a so the bearings actually are right here. <laughs> you didn't have to take it apart. Why'd you take it apart, Donnie? If we didn't have to take it apart, because I didn't know how to take it. we didn't know, people. We didn't know. So we're gonna see if we can pull some of that out and just figure out what our issue is. I think we got a locked up bearing or something. So this whole thing's been designed very well the whole time we've had it, in my opinion. You can see how he uh, ran the bearings. So we're gonna pull some of them out and look at them and see if we can figure out what's going on. You can also see that see that ridge there, right in the center of the screen on the rail, where it looks like the bearing has been eating it. Um, I think that sawdust is acting like sandpaper. Yeah, so we'll figure it out. Dope. All right, so we took one off. These are just brushes, actually, on the outside. So it's just to try to keep some of the, uh, sawdust. the sawdust out and to keep the rail clean. Um, you can see, if you look close at the rail, how the bearings are kind of eating it up. And so you get this lip. So the noise we're hearing is probably just the bearings rolling over that, uh, where it's ate up that bar. But this is just kind of a wear thing. I mean, we've cut a lot of freaking sheets on this thing. I've probably cut, I've cut probably uh, about 400 sheets. Yeah, we've probably cut 400 sheets and the guy before us was using it. So I don't know how much he cut on it. So um, it might just be, it's a thing, it's, it's time to service it. So we're gonna keep seeing if we can get those bearings out. All right, we've got the top off. There's no problem with any of this. We're just, we have to disassemble it so we get in there those bearings. Now, I think you probably don't have to do all of this, but we're trying to take the whole thing apart so that basically we can flip these rails. Them bearings in there. Mm hmm. Bearings look good, all of them. Mm hmm. All of that's cool. The bearing for the belt was fine. So basically, we've got it pretty much all apart. Who knows if we'll get it back together? This is going to be a long video. It's going to be a long video, Donnie. Uh -huh. All right, so we want to get the bearing, the bearings out, and uh, <laughs> we kind of need to see how to get these bars out, too. All right, folks, we have removed one of the bearings. We are excited. Woohoo! Oh, man, we're excited. Woohoo! I'm trying to read it. Let's see here. I'm trying to use the camera and a light. WT. God, you can't hardly read that. I don't have good light. 608R9. What is this saying? WTC. Is that WTCO? Is that a. Is that something? 
probably manufacture Time Warner cable. Yeah, I don't think they did it. It's too nice. Mm. They don't even exist anymore, Donnie. Time Warner don't? No, it's a Spectrum. W-T-O-O. -O. Never heard of it. I can read it upside down, but I can't read it. 608R9, is that what it said? No, oh, 60BRS? What the hell? 608R8, maybe. 608R8? Huh? 608RS. Do we concur? Go down to the... 608 the, RS. Go down to the local bearing shop and tell them you need one of those. Okay, let me go Google bearing shop. Okay, y'all, there's no turning back now. I got this thing. It's got enough wiggle in it where I can push this runner forward and get that... I'm going to get that... Uh, I'm going to pull these out, snatch them out, turn them 90 degrees and slide them right back in. So basically taking this top edge and I'm moving around to the side so I'm gonna put me new running edges on the top so I'm fixing to pull the screws out of the other side pull them out spin them slide them back in and uh, get us a nice edge up here and get this dent out of here that Ronnie was talking about and there's a little bit of a lip there where them bearings has been running and wore on both of them see there I'm gonna try to get that and move it over to here. So I got a brand new edge all over again. So I'm gonna flip them and uh, we'll see what we can do with that. I hope that makes it uh, makes it a little easier on us. I'm gonna have to take my rubber mallet and drive this screw head here and see if it'll push that out. I think it will. Okay, y'all, it's only been seconds for you. It's been days for me here. I got them turned. Okay. We got a problem. I just seen this. Uh, that bolt. This bolt here ain't long enough. Okay. So what I had to do is. I had to get a longer bolt. It's quarter 20. So I had that one laying here. So I made it up and stuck it in there. I'm going to stick the sawzall in there and cut the end of it off. Give me some more clearance. But I, I did what I succeeded to do. I mean, I did what I set out to do. Flip them things over. I got them both flipped. Um, this belt is run wild now. So I gotta get that back the way it goes. That goes in there like so. Like so, that goes in there. And then this bearing, this double bearing goes in there and holds it in place. So I had to pop all that apart to get everything to work the way it needed to work. It's about 10,000 degrees in here. I gotta get that nipped off. Might just take this thing back off. I don't know. It's stuck out there far enough, I can probably cut it off. I gotta get that end of that bolt cut off. So, I'm gonna do that. And then uh, I'm gonna get that bearing put back in there and get the motor put back on there. And uh, I'm gonna call it for the day. It's about 300 degrees and uh, get it done here. Okay, y'all, I'm back on this thing. I've got these top four rollers changed. We are practicing what we preach here. Made in Italy. Um, they're about $2 a piece. Made in Italy. They're two, two three bucks a piece. Uh, you can buy the Chinese ones for a dollar or for 20 cents a piece. We don't uh, we don't support China when we can help it. So these uh, that are in here, I have no clue who made them, but you can see the metal shavings on them. There's two of them here. The way I'm getting them out, take them over here. I got that little table set up. Set that there. Hit it. Me a little table set up. 
you got to be on top of that two before. Hopefully you're out of the wind noise. You take that, you set it there, hit it with a hammer, drop it down flush, take that one, use it as a punch, sit it on top of it, hit it again, drive it out. Um, well, actually, once it gets flush, you've got to change, change over to this one, and then that, it'll drive out of there. Once you get it drove out, these are the ones I've already changed. You can see that stuff on them now. I believe that's what was the grinding noise was. I'm not sure, but all of them's got that same stuff on them. bearing itself don't feel bad but they're running an outside race basically as a bearing I don't know if that's you know actually the way it's designed to go but they're running that as like a wheel I would say that's probably not exactly correct but it's working so I'm gonna change out a couple more of these I need a number four Allen flex See if I can find a flexible number four Allen to go. If you can see, I've got to get a bolt back up in there behind that, behind that shaft, the other end of that shaft up there. See if I can get light up there too. Mm -hmm. Don't look like it. Yeah, you can see that bolt head right there. Got to get up in there. It's number four Allen for sure. If I could find a flexible one, I get right up in there to it. That one's going to be a bear too. That one down in there, and this one over on this side is going to be bad. So I got to figure out a way to get them. Um, I'm going to search the interweb and see if I can find that number four flexible Allen and get it coming where I can finish this up this weekend. Within 15,000, one side to the other. It's got to be within about 20,000 or it won't work. That one's within 3,000. So that's how I'm doing it. Slowly but surely. Okay, y'all, we've been working on this thing about all day. So I got the bearings replaced in there. There's all the old bearings. So I got all of them replaced. Got the front cover back on it. I got this piece back on it. I got the spring back on it. Spring there. I got the front end back on it. Ronnie lost my Allen wrench. 
I don't know what he done with it. He ain't here for me to ask him. So my Allen wrench, I ain't got my Allen wrench. So I'm, is that my Allen wrench? There's my Allen wrench. About time Ronnie told me where the Allen wrench was. I've been looking everywhere for that Allen wrench. Ronnie made me lose it. And now I couldn't find it, but now I found it. We're back in business. So we're gonna tighten this thing back up. I've got them too tight. They got washers on them. These don't have no washers. They just tighten up like so. Now I gotta get this one lined up and get it tightened up. I have no clue where that damn screw goes. Hopefully Ronnie does. Oh yeah, I do. Right there. You see, that's the only one that's missing the screw right there. So that damn thing got to go there. Now this, it ain't, it don't look straight. That looks too far off. Basically, I'm looking here. Got to get halfway lined up, you know. There we go. There we go, we got it, we got it started. Tighten it up. There we go, that was tight. Now, this thing, it goes up here, I guess. I guess that goes like that. You'd think it'd go the other way, but I don't think it can. I think it's got to go like that. Let's see if we can get these screws started. Okay. Just take your thumb with these things and work your thumb around like so, and you can run that screw all day long. Just gotta get it lined up in there somewhere. There we go, we got it started. Okay, so we're gonna keep going here and this thing goes right here on the front. It gets lined up and them screws go in there like so. I'm trying to pay attention to what I'm doing, not paying attention to the camera here. I ain't figured out how to do both of those yet. So anyway, that's how that goes back on. And then it's gonna be about set up. I gotta hook this up. I think it's right there. Yeah, that's there. That one broke off, it goes there. Them stops don't work anyway. And this is my Z control. This is my, this is my power Z, uh, whatever. I don't know if it's classified power, but that's how I Z my my machine. Now that screw. Where does that screw go? I think that goes in a router. Is that possible? Hmm. I don't know where that screw goes. Had to call Ronnie and ask him. Little tiny Phillips. There wasn't no Phillips in here. But anyway, we about got it back together. Hopefully it works when we get it all back together. I got to get the router back on it to get all that stuff. And then we got to Z everything out. We got to um, surface the uh, surface the spool board. Make sure everything's back lined up because I moved all my settings here so not, the Z is not going to be right. None of my right and lefts are going to be right. Everything's going to be screwed up. I've been pushing this back and forth. So uh, that's going to be screwed up. So I got to recalibrate basically the whole nine yards. So we're going to do that when Ronnie gets back because he's the guru on that kind of stuff. I'm just a grunt labor. All I'm doing is putting this thing together. And uh, we'll have Ronnie figure the rest of it out. Okay, y'all, I got it back together. Nice and quiet. It ain't grinding when it's going across there. I still ain't got it all the way. I got it all hooked up, but I ain't. I got like this, I got the hook on there. That's my back end. And this is my automatic, whatever. And so there's still a few things I got a hook on there, but we'll run it left to right here. 
before it was grinding when it was over there. Now it's not grinding at all. That makes it nice. We come back this way. It ain't making no noise. We're good. I gotta zip tie a couple of these lines up. I gotta get my ground back. I mean, not my ground, but my uh, my uh, this thing back on there. We gotta get everything re-zeroed. We gotta get a new uh, spool board. I'm gonna put a new spool board on it, clean it up, and uh, try to level everything up and get it all cut and good again. We uh, we refigured the whole thing, so. I'm sure we're gonna have to re rejigger the whole mechanism. But we did get these spun. So we got clean ones up top. And we got all new bearings in it. So should do good for a while. This I just had clipped on zip ties up there, and you can see that. So I've got to get some more zip ties because I gotta get this zip tied to here where it goes around, where it don't get hung up on us. We, that's the last thing we need to get hung up. So we get this over here and get it zip tied. And then, you know, your cord comes here. And then you go down here. And then you zip tie it down here. See, I had it zip tied there. And then you come around and come back. And I can probably use this. Nope. I cut that zip tie in the wrong spot. Or I could have uh, reused it. So that's the kind of stuff you got to think about. But anyway, let me get some zip ties and uh, we'll see what we can do with it. Okay, y'all, we got the spool board off of our CNC machine. If you know anything about, if you've been with the channel a while, you know the CNC machine we bought used. We went around and outlined where the board goes. Probably didn't need to do that because there's a perfect line, but you can see where the other person has put a ton of screws in this thing everywhere. So, um, Hmm. We're gonna get a new spool board put on it, get it trimmed out, get it knocked down where uh, we know it's nice and flat. And we're hoping when we do that, that will uh, that will eliminate some of our problems we're having with it. I think the table is a little crooked. We think that right in through there is the high spot. We think. Not sure, but we will know when we go to trimming it. We'll trim it all off and we'll be able to tell. I got a new spool board I bought today, so we'll get it up here, get it lined up, get it laid in here and uh, see if we can't uh, figure it out. Look at that though, that's pretty neat. Evidently that was a bad spot. There's another bad spot. These two don't have any bad spots. Hmm. That's weird. But let's, uh, let's get this board in here and uh, get this thing set up where we can trim it off. Right here, there's hardly any lip, and over here, there's a huge lip. So, now it's taking that lip away. Out there in the middle, I don't think it's going to be touching. It's supposed to be taking 100,000. This table is, I believe it's bowed in the middle. We might 
might have to do this twice to get it just right. We're going to do whatever we got to do to make it flat out there. We tried to do it on the other one, uh, on the other spool board, but I don't think we got it right. I don't think it's ever right. And every time the table moves, it moves the the, uh, the actual thickness. So you got to leave it where it's sitting and uh, see what we can do here. We're running at 115 inches a minute. I'm going to go speed that up a little bit, I believe. I think we can do it a little faster than that. But uh, we're sucking up good. We've got good vacuum on it. It's still higher on this side than it is in the middle. And I believe it's higher than it is on that side. I could get uh, mics out, but I don't think it's quite worth that yet. But we're working it here. We'll figure it out. doing this morning cutting 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 Make it do it. We'll be back. See, it ain't touching nothing now. So, we're going to have to do it again. We'll have to do the whole thing over again because there's a cup there in the, in the middle. We ain't cutting enough. But I don't want to take a big stick cut at one time because I don't know that my machine will handle it. So, see, we're not touching there neither. We'll have to run through it here and uh, see what we can do. I'm going to speed it up a little faster. It's running 100 and uh, it's cutting over there now. It's running 100 and uh, 100. Well, I'll just show you here. That's what I've got done so far. Speed rating uh, 30% over. 
But it's not touching anything now. You can hear it when it touches. I figured, you know, when you look at this side, you can kind of tell. It ain't going to start touching good that it gets up here. From here to here, there's a hump in the board. So we'll uh, sit there for a minute, and uh, it's cutting a little over there right now. But it, it needs to uh, come down just ever so slightly. I did count as sink teeth. I got them halfway down in the board. I got uh, 12 screws in it, so that should be plenty. And uh, we'll see what the hell happens here. We're just going to keep cutting.
Okay, y'all, right there at the end, I slowed it way back down. I got it back down to uh, about 100 and, I don't know, it was 105, 106 inches per minute. I was trying to make sure I didn't, I could get, I wasn't making those grooves by speed. So I slowed it down to make sure, and I was not. Them grooves are just there because um, that router is probably tilt, tilted just ever so slightly. And there is no real way to make sure it's flat in there. So that's going to be a byproduct, I believe, of it. But it's nice and flat. I was going to do it a second time, but I put that bearing right there at one point in the video. It's right there. You can kind of see that one shiny spot. That's the only spot, really, on the whole board that didn't get touched. And uh, you can see it there. You can see it good there. I don't think that's a big enough spot to worry about. So I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm going to uh, throw some wood up on here and cut it and see if I can't, uh, see if it ain't a little better than what it was. So give me a thumbs up for filming, subscribe to the channel if you hadn't already, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.